I'd like to ever uh, welcome everybody to the uh, inaugural uh, USA Pro Challenge Women's Pro Kickoff Press Conference. I think that deserves a round of applause. I'd like to introduce uh, members of the dais, Sean Petty, uh, who's uh, the race director for the inaugural race. He'll be uh, giving a recap of all the stages, uh, prize uh, list, and uh, uh, other insights here. Uh, Kristen Armstrong of the uh, 2016, uh, presented by Show Air team. Mara Abbott, uh, Abbott, Abbott of the USA, uh, I'm sorry, of the uh, Amy D Foundation. Hannah Barnes, the United Healthcare Professional Team. Ellie Tetrick, the Optum presented by Kelly Benefits Strategy Team. Robin Farina of the BMW, presented by Happy Tooth Dental. Meredith Miller of the Pepper Palace Pro Cycling, presented by the Happy Tooth Team. And Joe uh, Kazanowski of uh, Team Tibco uh, SVB. So Sean, uh, let's start with you. Uh, quick overview of the event, and certainly um, how we got here. Great to see, obviously, in year five of the USA Pro Challenge. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, welcome to everybody here. It's, it's nice to see a lot of folks. We know the men's race is going on, and uh, we appreciate you all being here. Uh, this has been a huge and important initiative. Uh, Sean Hunter, who's obviously the, uh, one of the founders of, of the USA Pro Challenge, this was always uh, a goal. It was always a plan to have the women's race when we could support it correctly and, uh, and equally important, make it sustainable. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's why we're in year five, and, and I think we've come out uh, with you know three challenging days of racing. Uh, the the um, local organizers in Breckenridge, Fort Collins, and uh, Golden have been phenomenal. Uh, we added this late, and they've been nothing but uh, excited and gracious and, and really embracing the, uh, the women's race. So we're, we're thankful for that. Uh, and again, Sean Hunter's vision and, and support. Uh, we need the resources. So here we are. And, uh, it's going to be a good three days of racing. I think we we put some challenging courses out there, uh, and certainly throwing in altitude to to make it even more interesting. Um, as you've probably heard and seen, hopefully by now, we've got a, the time trial tomorrow, uh, same course as the men. The women will go before the men, and uh, I'm trusting that a few are going to beat some of the guys out there. So we'll we'll see. Uh, <coughs> in fact, I'm confident. Uh, but uh, again, same course as the men. That'll be great tomorrow. Then um, Saturday, we'll do a 58-mile road race from Loveland to Fort Collins, uh, feature the climb up uh, Buckhorn Canyon and then descent down Risk Canyon into Fort Collins. Uh, and then finally, in Sunday, uh, in Golden, we'll have um, a, a fast and challenging criterium course. So I think we've, we've, we've managed to get something for everyone here. We've got climbers. We've got, uh, obviously, the time trial and, and sprinters. So. And, and the great thing is it's, it's represented by the field we have, and, and we're elated that the women's teams came here and supported this because we did come you know, late to the mix uh, on the calendar. And there are a lot of, uh, you know, we recognize there are a lot of top women's races in Europe going on at the time. So uh, we're very you know, pleased and honored to have really such a, a stellar field uh, in this year one. And, and the plan and aspiration certainly is to, to grow this. And um, you know, hopefully, uh, do a good job this year, put on a great show, and uh, we'd like to see it expand in, in number of days and uh, an international uh, calendar and international team. So, again, very happy and excited with the teams we have here and can't wait for uh, the race to start tomorrow. Thanks, Sean. And uh, this event is privately funded, and it's taken uh, certainly the sponsor team here at the USA Cho uh, Pro Challenge uh, a lot of effort, but we've got uh, some great sponsors this year that are displayed here with the uh, five jerseys. We've got the Strava sponsoring most aggressive jersey. We've got Lexus and the Sprint Points jersey. Smashburger is the uh, yellow leaders jersey. Sierra Nevada for the Queen of the Mountain uh, jersey. And then Colorado State University for the best young uh, rider jersey. And I think uh, to Sean's point, Sean Hunter uh, and the team back in Denver have put in a lot of work. Uh, to make this happen, and uh, we're glad we're here. Uh, Joe, let's start with you. Um, uh, could you, first of all, have you surveyed any of the courses where you're out today? Uh, and have you uh, 
rode the, the TT uh, circuit that you'll be featured in tomorrow. Yeah, I was just out on it. Um, is this working here? <laughs> yeah, I've actually ridden all three of the courses, so I'm pretty excited about all of them. Yeah, t uh, tomorrow's course is really hard, and you know, when you look at it on paper, you think, oh, that's not so bad, and then you actually go and ride it, and you're like, whoa, you know, you're in your smallest gear, like, struggling to get up there. So it'll be it'll be definitely a, a tough course, and, um, you know, it's really cool that we get to do the same course as the guys, you know, obviously, like you said, we can test ourselves against the guys, and I'm sure there'll be, you know, some girls that might beat some guys. <laughs> And looking at all three courses that you've surveyed them, uh, give us a sense of, you know, obviously there's a little bit for everybody here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's great that, you know, we have a time trial, a road race, and, you know, a circuit race as well. So, you know, there is something for everybody. And the, the race in Golden is, you know, definitely, it's not just for sprinters. You know, it's, it's got a pretty decent climb in that as well. And it's really technical. So, you know, the overall winner here will have to be somebody that, you know, that can, you know, do everything on a bike. So it's, it's great. Robin, you're a strong uh, uh, time trialist. Can you talk about tomorrow's? Uh... Well, hold on. Let me see if I can breathe first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's funny because I haven't seen it until, the, until this morning. I rode it twice. Um, you know, it's a toss up whether what kind of equipment you're going to ride. You know, it's uh, do you lose time on the time trial bike or do you put on clip ons or do you ride? ride a road bike so that's the stuff you know I've kind of been going over my head and you know it's obviously it's going to be super hard I mean we're for those of us who are not from altitude it's uh you know you're kind of looking down the road at the state at the other stages but you know I mean it's anybody's game tomorrow I think uh you gotta make a decision are you gonna do a bike change that's that's actually came up so I don't know <laughs> why not but yeah I mean I think it's a it's a great course it'll definitely uh prove a, a, a worthy winner so yeah it's exciting have you been able to acclimatize at all when did you get to altitude well I was in Utah for the tour of Utah so I spent an extra several days there I went home to Nevada City which is not completely low but uh, you know it's got a little elevation and I came out here I was here uh, last Friday for a tour to cure to tour to cure event so uh, I did that and so I've been in, in Boulder for the past uh, past week so I just got here last night and it's uh, it's been tough to walk upstairs <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to Mara Abbott, um, two-time um, Tour of Italy uh, winner, and um, and so uh, obviously you get the best Colorado uh, makeup here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, give us a little background on the uh, where in the sea. Wait, give back the flag. Up. Where where in the sea? First of all, I like your style. Where in the sea? Um, I mean, honestly, for me and to Sean, this is probably the biggest deal cycling thing that has ever happened to me um, because I think that anyone can say you know it's special to have your have a race in your hometown so your friends can come see you and your parents can come see you and all of those sorts of things but for me Colorado is <coughs> I mean it's more than the place that I grew up it's everything that I am I can't really describe it but I just make more sense here and so to be able to show that was a really bad thing to say when I'm wearing this right now. <laughs> um, but to be able but to be able to show that to the cycling world and to be able to be a part of it. And I was just talking with Meredith um, when I went and I looked at the Fort Collins course to see how much of my life takes place here from, you know, that's the highway I used to drive to go to swim meets. Um, and I couldn't be prouder to get to represent this race and it's just the coolest bike thing that's ever happened and it hasn't even happened yet so rock on Colorado yeah pretty much. <laughs> and Kristen on to you uh, Kristen is two-time Olympic gold medalist two-time world champion and I believe four-time national champion correct uh, out of retirement and uh, won the time trial at the uh, Amazon tour of California welcome um, obviously I'd like to hear your comments on uh, on the time trial and also What's it going to take when you redline at altitude? That's something you really got. I'm sure you got to monitor, especially with that uh, 1K climb on the backside going up uh, Boreas Pass. Yeah, you know, I think that over the years I've um, experienced time trialing. Um, I'm really happy that I'm at, I'm at a place that it doesn't really matter what kind of time trial course is thrown in front of me. I really enjoy all of them. And so I think the, the most spectacular part of any time trial is 
Um, the pre-writing and really figuring out prior to coming here to actually see it, to figure out what equipment you're going to use, um, because that's all part of the process, and the process is what's fun. The race goes by so quickly, and at the end of the race, you always want a do-over, and none of us get a do-over. We're all going to have pins and needles going through our arms and legs, and that's just how it's going to be. And so there are all the things that, um, that just happen to every one of us racing, but I just love the process of the time trial. It's the same thing that I'm going through right now with preparing for Richmond um, in September, and every time trial requires a little bit of uh, different equipment, and um, it's so great to have sponsors like SRAM and ZIP to have those options um, so that you can make those adjustments as needed. Um, I went out and rode the course today, and what I thought I was going to do is uh, different than what I will be doing tomorrow. Um, but I think it's a good thing because um, just preparing and having that um, at those different options um, kind of in the wheel wheelhouse is going to be great. And I, I, I can't thank everyone enough. Um, <coughs> I think it's really special to have Sean Petty here because he spent so many years in USA Cycling, supporting USA Cycling and all the different development programs and men's and women's and everything. But to see that he actually has spent time after um, kind of leaving USA Cycling onto some different endeavors, um, I think it's really special that you um, decided to commit this kind of time. I. I just can't imagine how much time it's taken, and actually I do know, um, but I haven't lived in your shoes and I know how much work it is, and I just appreciate you supporting women cycling, so I just want to thank you. Sean Petty, I love you. <laughs> that really cost me a lot of money. <laughs> thank you, Kristen, that's very nice. And I would just say, if I could just say real quick, Steve, um, I, you're, it's been a lot of work, but uh, medalist sports, and the medalist sports team, and certainly Sean Hunter's uh, Pro Challenge team uh, are amazing. So while it's been a lot of work, uh, it's it's easy to plug into the best organizers uh, you know in the world, I, I, in my opinion. So, thanks. On to Ali Tetrick, uh, Ali, looking at all three stages and uh, looking at the team makeups. Uh, across the board, is there one single stage you you've got sort of asterisked? Um, maybe golden. I think if you look at all the stages, um, they provide something for everything, for everyone, like we've said. So um, my team, Optum Pro Cycling, pre presented by Kelly Benefit Strategies, we have a good group of all-arounders here. So looking for a lot of different opportunities and see how things shake up tomorrow. And then also, you know, anything can happen from there on out. So I think it's going to be a really exciting race. Um, my team just came back from a big block in Europe. And I told, I told Sean, you know, I'm over there in France, and we have to come back to this race, but we're um, really proud to uh, support this race, so really showing to uh, schedule our season around coming and supporting this race, supporting Sean, uh, medalist in um, Mara's home state of Colorado here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> to, to really hope this, um, this grows further, so showing how important it is for us to come to this, these races. Um, but I think it's going to be three days of very exciting racing. Um, you know, it's a long descent after the climb on the road race, and so anything can happen there um, as well. So we'll see. Um, looking for opportunities. And uh, could you talk about the evolution and the growth of uh, women's cycling now? Obviously with California, Utah, now here in Colorado. I've had the um, pleasure, I serve on the board of USA Cycling with Sean, and so I've had the pleasure of working with him and Chris and USA Cycling um, and really watching the growth of women cycling the last oh, four years, I've, three years I've been on that. And um, it's, really, it's really neat to see. Um, and it's races like this that have the cachet and have the level of um, exposure and importance to them that are providing this platform for us to showcase our sponsors, also our sport. So I've really seen a lot of growth and to take this kind of leap and maybe it didn't happen as soon as some would like, but knowing that when it does, it's to the level of support and it's going to be a good race. Uh, Amgen Tour of California has been huge. Uh, this year was great. So looking forward to building on that platform in the future. Okay. And um, I pass the mic down here to Hannah. Uh, Hannah, you guys have a very strong team here. Obviously, uh, so does 2016. Uh, but handicap a little bit for us going into uh, the next three days, uh, your team and, and how you're going to be set up. I think we have riders for all the stages. Um, me and Corinne will probably 
the crit. Um, I've, I've not actually ridden the road race or the crit, so I don't really know, but um, yeah, I think it's good that I'm just riding the road race once. Because <laughs> that the last climb <coughs> sounds pretty hard, but I, with the, the descent going straight into Fort Collins, I think it should be, it'll be interesting. It's hard to know what's gonna happen on that day. And so the crit is something you guys have a little bit outlined, but like you said, you've got a lot of depth in the, in the squad here. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we're quite, we like racing the crits, but with a stage race team, um, one like this, it's going to be challenging, and it's so hard with GCs and just trying to. I mean, it's the last day, so the, we've got um, two days to see how it's going to play out. Okay, Anna Meredith uh, Miller, uh, Meredith, uh, have you surveyed any of the courses? And uh, it always seems to be, you know, when you have a time trial, road race, and the way the crit uh, lays out. Uh, you know, just give us your thoughts and overview. Well, today was actually the first time I saw the um, the TT course. Uh, the last time I was in Breck was last year when I came in to, ri to race the Firecracker 50, which is a mountain bike race. So um, I came in this morning. I, I live in Boulder, so it was, um, you know, it was easy for me to wake up this morning and get in here early enough to go see the, the TT course. And was uh, still not prepared for how difficult <laughs> it is. I mean, everybody was like talking about this climb and how steep it is. And it's like, okay, I, I, we do steep. We've got steep in, in Boulder. And then got here this morning, was completely blown away. Um, and then the road race on Saturday, that's gonna be something really special to me. Like Mara, I used to live in Fort Collins before moving to Boulder. And so I used to train on, you know, in Buckhorn and over wrist and through Masonville and all those ro roads. So it's going to be something special to be able to go out and be on those roads with no cars. I mean, that's everybody's, I think everybody, every cyclist's dream is to be able to go out on their favorite roads with, you know, clear roads, no traffic. And uh, so it's just, it's going to be really cool. I haven't actually been up there yet um, to see the course, but I used to train on those roads a lot. And then Golden is, um, it's going to be a harder course than most people think as well because that, that climb and that course is, is going to take its toll on people. And it's, you know, it's a longer course than just a crit. Um, and, you know, it is technical and it's fast. And there's, you know, some like an off-camber turn going into the last turn and stuff. So it's, it's going to throw a little bit of everything at, at all the racers. And then, you know, the altitude too will, will be another little. Um, Beat me to the final question, which, <laughs> which was being from Colorado, can you ever be really altitude adjusted? Well, especially at high altitude. Yeah, coming up to 10,000 feet, double of what I live at. No, it's 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 tough. I mean, so I think in a way, kind of sort of neutralizes, you know, the people who live at altitude, maybe in a way, because it's still difficult for the rest of us too who live at. I don't know. Joe lives, or you know, when she's in the spring, she's at 6,000 feet. You know, Mara and we're used to being at 5,000 feet, and it's still difficult to me. I don't. I don't know. It's 5,500. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know at this high, at, at 10,000 feet, if we really have that much of an advantage over anybody else. Okay, uh, we'll open up to questions here. And we do have a, uh, another mic here. Uh, this message is for Kristen. Kristen, um, you've been competing in the Pro Peloton for... Uh, the better part of the last decade, you've seen women cycling hit high points and low points. Um, what's y what's your barometer right now of where women cycling as a whole is um, compared to where you've seen it in the past? Um, I think that um, I I see positives coming. Um, I've seen positives in the last several years. I I wouldn't have come back to the sport if I didn't see the momentum. I would say that when I started um, cycling in 2003 on T-Mobile, I would say that um, women's cycling was at one of the highest levels. Um, I would say that we, we had the Route de France, we had um, the ORIDA HP Women's Challenge. There was several, um, there wasn't a calendar year that I didn't do at least a nine or 10 day stage race, probably two. We had Tour de Load, we had the Giro. Um, and so I came and I was so lucky. Um, and like Mara, um, the HP Women's Challenge, which was the largest, well, largest prize purse stage race in the world, we had everyone coming over. It had a great reputation. And I had um, just used to watch the women come through my town. <coughs> and finally, I tried to, to participate. And um, by the end of that week, that's where I had three contract offers. And so I know how special it is. It is and I hope that there are some 
Colorado women here um, that are local that get have opportunity the next three days to race with us because if it wasn't for that race back in 2002, um, I would have not been where I am today. Um, and that just takes one simple race coming through your state, your home state that you're proud of. Um, but then I would say fast forward it a little bit and um, um, kind of towards the end of, of my career, you, you saw um, things, salaries going down, um, people were figuring out that they couldn't sustain the budgets because the budget just right off the bat, the salaries were so great that um, teams couldn't even get the sponsorship at the level of supporting the salaries alone. And so as a team, as a director, as a manager, you have to decide, do I want to pay these women good salaries or do I want to race these women? And I think that that's a really difficult question because I, I love racing my bike and um, I think that's why I've had my entire career I've worked part time. I work about at least 20 hours a week and that's just so that I can make it and that I don't have to choose teams where I'm choosing a salary because sometimes those environments aren't good. Um, some of my best environments were the environments where I wasn't making any money. Um, and so now in the last couple years with all the momentum, I think there's a lot of great advocacy out there. I think that there's been a lot of momentum. I still think that there is a, a, a ways to go. And um, I was just recently interviewed <coughs> about the same question. And the biggest thing that I would encourage all of us to do, and this is just not even about increasing race distances, increasing salaries, increasing teams. I think we all want that. But the biggest thing is I always ask myself, why do Americans watch the Olympics every four years? And the reason why I watch the Olympics, it doesn't matter if you're in fencing, if you're a swimmer, if you're a gymnast, if you're a cyclist. I watch the Olympics actually every two years, winter and then summer. And the reason why I follow these athletes is because of their story. It's their personal story, it's their personal connection that I have with these athletes. And I'm telling you, I'm not sure if Lisa remembers this, but back in 2002, when you started the prologue at the Women's Challenge, the way you were introduced was, and here we have Dr. Christine Thorburn up here. She has a PhD in blah, 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 blah. And oh, by the way, here are some of her cycling results. <laughs> by the way, the next one is we have a lawyer from, we have a very educated Peloton. And we have so many stories and each of us have our own story and every one of our stories is so unique. But I encourage all of us to tell our story more because I, I can't, I, I know Meredith, I know Allison, I know, I know Robin, I know all these gals up here with me today. I don't know their story. Because one, maybe we're not asked our story, um, but I encourage us to tell our stories because once those connections are made, whether it's with the CEO of a, a big uh, business or organization that wants to support that. Um, I just want, I think we need to connect ourselves more with um, the general population. So. Sorry, I just came out. Neil Amina, Amina Asa Sports. Kristen, um, Sean was saying that you came out of, or was it Steve? Uh, but you came out of retirement. It was it hard to stay retired from <coughs> any sport whatsoever? And, uh, and how has this race impacted uh, women's cycling overall? I mean, what's the overall excitement that you see in among your cyclists? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it wasn't, well, it was difficult while I was retired, but um, during those two years, I had about um, three hip surgeries and about six hip sur procedures. So I was laid up for most of that time. Um, but being the competitive person I am, I had to compete against Brett Favre, and he's retired a couple times, so I need to <laughs> retire a couple times. and. You know what, people ask me all the time and they're like, well, what's your story? Why are you coming back? What, I mean, come on, what's your story? And at the end of the day, you know what, you wanna know why? Because I can, and I love cycling and I'm gonna tell each one of these girls up here that if you don't think this is your time of your life, you're kidding yourselves. Because the minute you are finished, you're gonna always look back at what we're doing today. So enjoy every moment, enjoy the journey, and no matter what happens as the outcome on race day, it's really the journey because every story I tell is not about a race. It's all about how I got there and it's hard. It's hard, um, and having the um, um, the women here in Colorado at a three-day stage race, I think it's a great platform. I think it's a great start. Um, I think that it really excites um, 
not only the riders, but our sponsors. And so I think there's opportunity. I think that um, we've gotten the word out that you need to follow us live. You need to do all these wonderful things. And so um, I think that, again, as I said, we need to connect to our communities. I think that this race is providing the perfect platform to connect to our communities because I think that outside of just racers, um, there's a lot of other people out there that we need to um, get involved in our sport. Did any of you uh, attend the previous four years of the Pro Challenge, and was that difficult? Yes. <laughs> you that up, didn't you? <laughs> I paid him. <laughs> In what way? Well, um, I think when the moment that I realized that it was going to be really challenging, um, a couple years ago, um, they had a stage that finished up Flagstaff in Boulder, and I grew up at the base of Flagstaff, and my parents still live there. And one of the men's racers, Peter Stetna, who went to my middle school and elementary school with me, um, talked in, in a Bella News article about how much it meant to him to get to race in his home state and in his hometown, and on the climb that you know he does his hill repeats on. And I read that, and I was like, damn it. And I, was <laughs> and I realized how sad it was that to be able to compete in that race would have been my dream too and I couldn't do it and I honestly like I've told a couple of people this when they asked the question but the first couple of years um I didn't go like my favorite climb in Boulder is Sunshine Canyon and they were racing up Flagstaff and so everyone was on Flagstaff and I just went and I rode up and down Sunshine Canyon a bunch of times and we had a little time together um because we were both feeling a bit neglected um but I like I didn't even go I didn't even have any interest to go in that wasn't super mature, but that's <laughs> how much I wanted to be able to be a part of it. And, um, you know, last year I actually did end up going down. They had a start of a stage in Boulder, and I went down to um, watch the start. And, you know, you go and you see them start, but there's like a part of you that's sitting there, and it's not as much fun as it should be. There's sort of a feeling in the pit of your stomach that's the same feeling from, again, being mature when you're a little kid and you're like, that's just not fair, it's just not fair. And so to get the opportunity to do, now, do it now, I mean, I hope that there are more people out there who do have a little bit more of a broad sense than I and can appreciate the things even if they're not allowed to do them. Um, but it's so, so cool. And I don't know, maybe that's the first experience I ever had of women not being able to do something that men could do because I've had a really supportive growing up and that was the first time that I ever hit that wall and it didn't feel awesome. And so these guys giving us the chance to is dream come true for real. So So you're saying you're motivated to be here <laughs> I in mean, Colorado. Oh my god. You, you know it's for honestly it's the biggest deal for me ever to get to race here, but that w at whatever result I still get to race in Colorado. So oh my god. Uh, and I want to turn it back over to Sean here for a couple special announcements uh, regarding prize list and then also the overall uh, winner. And yeah, thanks, Steve. I think those of you who saw our initial announcements, uh, among the many tenets that were important was uh, certainly a very challenging and, and worthy race that uh, uh, recognizes the women's talent and the legacy of, of stage racing here in Colorado uh, and the legacy of, of excellent uh, U.S. women. We're very blessed to have a long history of women on the top step at the World Championships and the Olympic Games as witnessed here. So that will continue. Um, so that's that's part of it. The other was uh, a very important, uh, especially with, with Sean Hunter and, and he and I spoke initially, was we wanted to have uh, at least uh, at a minimum the same prize money as the men. So on every day, we'll have the same exact prize money, $11,000 a day for each day, so $33,000 uh, prize money. And thanks to Lexus, their support of both men's and women's races, the, uh, the winner will have a two-year lease on a Lexus NX200T. Uh, so um, not sure how the teams will sort that out, but you know, I'm sure they'll figure it out.
Any final questions? Uh, yeah, this question is from Meredith. Um, in terms of the GC battle, what are going to be the decisive stretches of road um, when you really break down all three stages? Like, what stretches of road are going to decide who wins this thing? That's a good question. I mean, <laughs> tomorrow will be very interesting to see how uh, this climb and the altitude sorts out the GC to you know to start things off, and then on Saturday. Um, that whole approach, the whole Buckhorn, you know, Stowe Prairie Buckhorn approach to the backside of wrist is, that's hard. It's really hard. And um, I think uh, we're going to see a lot of splits in that area. And then what will be interesting to see is what happens over the top of wrist because it is a long descent. And, um, you know, it's probably about a 20 minute descent, something like that. So definitely some things could come back. But I think also another bit of a surprise will be at the bottom of wrist. Um, as you start heading back into Fort Collins, there's going to be another little little bump. That's that's not so easy either. It's, it's short. Um, Bingham Hill is short, but it's uh, it's going to sting. And it could be, you know, it could split things up a little bit more. And then even on Overland coming back into town, it's still kind of a slow drag. It's not a climb per se, but um, so there's there are a lot of sections <laughs> on Saturday's course where, you know, at the end of a race, people are getting tired, and, and depending on how you know hard everyone's racing, um, which I expect they, you know, teams are going to be out to, you know, really throw down the hammer. That um, there'll be a lot of different places where things can really split up on Saturday, and then on Sunday, everybody's going to have felt the altitude already for a couple days. Um, have two days of racing in our legs already and so you know that climb and just the kind of accordion effect that you get through a crit and through turns and all that kind of stuff that's um yeah that's going to take its toll as well so uh, one more question for y'all um this is a question for sean as, uh, as well as allison allison you said you were on the u.s cycling board and mara also mentioned how much she wanted to be part of racing when this but it was a men's only race um is this particular women's race is an addition years later to a, a pre-existing men's race? Is it a benchmark for a women's race, for a women's cycling and women's and sports in general, uh, to have their own race and then maybe the men join on a pre-existing race? <laughs> I think um, this is a, is a good benchmark because of the level of this race and the notoriety it has. So, and the way I see it is I see the cycling community as a whole, whether you're male or female, I love racing at the same race as the men are at because I feel like it unites the cycling community. So the fans who may have their favorite male racer can also learn their favorite female racer and inspire young girls to know that, that this is what they can do. May not ride bikes or race bikes, but be healthy, active, and inspire those people. So bringing together the community is really important to me, but that doesn't dischange standalone events either. So, you know, women's cycling can have great standalone events like it has in the past or does now, but I like this as a benchmark to show that we're uniting the cycling community here at this level of race. And um, the way the growth of women's cycling is happening, I think it really helps because it broadens our fan base as well, that people didn't know we could race like at the race that the men are at. So they kind of introduced them to our sport. Does that make sense? I think from, uh, you know, it's, it's been a chicken and egg discussion for a long time. And I think uh, there's strengths to both. I mean, you look at Giro Rosa, it's an outstanding event on own. The women's state race in, in Great Britain, which is only two years old, is phenomenal, huge crowds. Um, I think, the, and, and, and you look back, and, and Kristen knows, and Robin and Meredith have raced for a long time. I think mean, you look at HP, and really, <clears throat> HP going back to Orida days. Now you know where I got this gray hair. <laughs> back in the day. Jeff Pierce riding up there, 7-Eleven. Um, but um, anyway, back then it was was we really we were able to push the envelope in the U.S. And, and I think um, that race and Jim Rabdow were were very much pioneers on women's racing because uh, the UCI at the time was very very restricted on the mileage. I don't know that they thought the women would crack after 50k or just fall apart. I'm not sure what they thought would happen. Um, so that race actually went outside of the structure. Uh, of the UCI and, and added much, much longer distances. And the women raced tremendously. And we had some of the best fields in the world. 
So I think we've always uh, been pushing that envelope here in the states to, to add uh, to add that and make it hard. And, and again, with this race, we like it farther, absolutely. So we, we we'll keep pushing those boundaries, um, and uh, and the women continue to step up and meet those challenges. So, uh, but as again, the standalone, there's 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 benefits to both, and um, uh, we certainly like to see HP. It was a it's just an amazing event historically, um, and and it was great that the women had it. Um, and back in the Coors Classic, uh, it was great that the women were were with with the men. Uh, I always remember we come and uh, I said Jeff Jeff races a million times, and uh, um, by the time we came from California, picking up the women and maroon bells and everything was just it was just added more excitement and uh, and noise to the race. And as again, Connie Carpenter and a lot of great women who raced for the states, you know, back then, I mean, it was just phenomenal. And, and we've, we've still got that feeling today. So I think we'll see that here over the next three days and support uh, for the women racing because they've seen it here in this state before. All right, we will, uh, oh, one more, Nathan. Are you prepared for some of the costumes you're gonna see out there tomorrow? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Are they prepared for the costumes they're going to see? That's the real question. Touche. Yeah, Moonstone's a little over the top. Maybe be crazier than Independence that we saw yesterday. Uh, after the uh, men's award ceremony, we will have the, uh, the team introduction uh, right outside here publicly, which is great. Um, and so we welcome uh, media members uh, to that as well. Also, a lot of great stories to uh, uh, has been spoken about already. I mean, Joe's husband is uh, uh, Jeff Pierce, who uh, over here, uh, stage winner of the Tour de France. So, great background, and uh, we look forward to these women um, in the next three days on the roads of the USA Pro Challenge. Final note: Derek Bouchard. Sorry, Derek Bouchard Hall. Please stand up. So Derek is the uh, the new president and CEO of uh, of USA Cycling. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to the race, Derek. And uh, and again, putting on my old geezer hat. So I I was <laughs> I was head of the athletics when Derek was uh, on the Olympic team in 2000. So it's uh, it's nice to see him uh, coming back and uh, and looking forward to exciting things. And great to be here. To certainly support the women's race. And uh, and I think Derek, are you doing the amateur TT tomorrow? So. <laughs> So now, now you know how many you can beat, Derek. That's also, that's also on the list. I'm gonna go as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Good luck this week.